In general, uh, in vitro fertilization or IVF is a very, very safe process. There are some very small risks that are associated with the process. For example, the first part of IVF involves taking shots of fertility medications. Individuals can get some redness or some soreness at the site of injections and occasionally may get some fluid retention, that sort of thing. Very rarely, in less than 5% of individuals who are taking injections of fertility medications, they may develop a syndrome that's called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. And this usually occurs after the eggs have been harvested, after the egg retrieval. And what the patient may experience is significant ovarian enlargement so that they have some pelvic discomfort. The other interesting thing that happens is their body can behave as if they were extremely dehydrated. And if this happens, this can require us to monitor these individuals very carefully. We may have to administer pain medication to make them more comfortable. And on a very rare occasion, we may actually have to give them intravenous fluids uh, to make sure that they have a normal level of hydration. It's a self-limiting process if the patient unfortunately does not conceive uh, at the time of the onset of their menses, all these symptoms will go very rapidly away. If the patient does become pregnant, then the symptoms may continue a little bit on until the early part of the pregnancy. The other complications that can occur are associated with the retrieval process. Again, it's a very safe process, but very rarely, uh, as a result of the retrieval, the individual may develop bleeding. This can require a brief period of observation in the hospital. For example, we can have to watch the individual overnight, uh, monitor their blood count, and make sure it doesn't drop. Usually, if there is bleeding, it stops on its own, and there's no further uh, intervention needed. Very, very rarely, there can be bleeding that can require intervention. That could require doing a surgical procedure, perhaps a laparoscopy, where we put a telescope uh, through the belly button into the abdomen to assess and see if there's bleeding. If there is bleeding, identify it, stop it, and then potentially uh, it may require blood transfusion. But that's exquisitely, exquisitely rare. That's seen in less than 1% of procedures that we do. When an individual conceives through IVF, in general, the pregnancy is no more complicated than if you spontaneously conceive on your own. The thing that creates complications is multiple births. So one of the things that we strive to do is to assure that patients don't end up with a multiple birth. For example, if you end up with twins, uh, whether that's spontaneously on your own or whether that's through the IVF process, the risk for you having a premature delivery goes up significantly. And if a baby is born prematurely, they may have problems with lung development. Uh, if they're born extremely prematurely, they have, may have problems with intellectual development, uh, that sort of thing. But in general, when someone conceives through IVF, the risk of having a pregnancy complication is no greater than should they conceive spontaneously on their own. Interestingly enough, there's really no data that IVF per se increases the risk of having a child with a birth defect. When the initial data came out looking at children conceived through IVF, there was a suggestion that there was a slight increased risk of birth defects. For example, in women who spontaneously conceive on their own, the risk of birth defects is about 3%. On the other hand, when you look at babies conceived through IVF, the risk of birth defects is about 4.5%. So initially when we saw these numbers, it created concerns and we said, ah, IVF is responsible for this. But then some statisticians, epidemiologists did some really good studies where they looked at this and they said, wait a second, there's a problem. Maybe there's a difference between women conceiving who have infertility and women who don't have infertility. And when they went back and investigated it, what they found out was, is yes, there may be a slight increased risk of birth defects, but it has nothing to do with the IVF process per se. It has everything to do with being infertile. We don't really know what the cause is, but women who have infertility, regardless of how they can see, whether they can see spontaneously or through IVF, do have a slightly increased risk of birth defects. But again, it's very, very small. We're talking going from about 3% to about four and a half percent. Recently, there was a very uh, good study published and they looked at uh, how children develop when they conceive with IVF. And what they found is um, their developmental process was absolutely no different than babies who were conceived spontaneously. So that was very, very reassuring. It was long-term follow-up and showed that children conceived through IVF develop exactly the same as children who were conceived spontaneously.